Welcome back to the seven day mental diet mini course. At this point, we're on video eight, which is uh, more videos than days in the mental diet, which means this is probably it. We're at least going to finish the text today. Um, I might have a discussion with Cecilia next week um, about mental diets, but I think we're going to finish the text today. At this point, um, you know, I assume. Um, that, sorry, my wife just texted me. I was just looking at that text. Um, I assume that you've gained enough, um, insight into the mental diet to do it. If you feel like between the text, obviously you have enough insight just by the text, but hopefully you have enough, you feel like you, you have enough additional information that you need, um, in order to do the diet in a way that feels good to you over the next seven days or whenever you decide to, to do the diet. And if for some reason you don't want to do the diet, you've also been supplied just some very interesting information about reactivity and quote unquote mind control, as well as um, one of the best explanations that I know of in regards how, of how to implement a lot of this new thought material, which was supplied by Emmett Fox in his short essay, The Golden Key, in which we did a video on specifically. So at the end of the seven day mental diet, Fox writes, in closing, I want to tell you that people often find that the starting of this diet seems to stir up all sorts of difficulties. It seems as though everything begins to go wrong at once. This may be disconcerting, but it is really a good sign. It means that things are moving and is not that the very object we have in view. Suppose your whole world seems to rock on its foundations. Hold on steadily, let it rock, and when the rocking is over, the picture will have reassembled itself into something much nearer to your heart's desire. This is a great paragraph and very important. You know, we've mentioned it before, but it's worth mentioning again that... Um, even if you think you have just a normal week ahead or even a semi-relaxed week in terms of activity, if you decide to go on a mental diet, chances are negative situations are going to present themselves to you in your life, particularly over, I would say, the first couple of days. But maybe maybe it'll be later than the first couple of days. Maybe it'll be throughout the whole seven days. You usually are going to be surprised with stuff that's going to come up or in the very least, you're going to be tested um, with negative uh, appearances, negative situations that you're going to have to deal with in a more non-reactive manner than you are used to, which is very um, beneficial in a reason we do the diet. So, you know, we're not dwelling in negativity. We're not allowing ourselves to dwell in our negative thoughts, uh, to dwell in how we feel because we're going to feel like crap a lot of the time on this diet in all likelihood. Um, we don't allow ourselves to dwell in that, you know, to beat ourselves up over that. We just keep, you know, we get that cinder off of our shirt, you know, we clean the slate over and over again. We're here, we're present over and over again. Oh, I have a lot of negative thoughts right now. Okay. You know, oh, my body feels uncomfortable. My, I feel, I feel very uncomfortable. I feel scared. I feel nervous. I feel ashamed, etc okay. It's okay. I'm not dwelling on any of this. I'm here. I'm present. We're doing this, you know, for seven days. And there's gonna be plenty of times where you feel good, probably on this diet. Okay. It's not like it, the negativity is necessarily going to be constant. It's just the, the negativity is going to be there inevitably in some shape and form. And I've in, uh, you know, initially it often appears in some shape or form quite dramatically, especially over the first couple of days of the diet. And Fox is saying that's actually a good thing. Suppose your whole world seems to rock on its foundations. Hold on steadily, let it rock. And when the rocking is over, the pitcher will have reassembled itself into something much nearer to your heart's desire. There you go. That's what we're going for on a practical level, right? He says the above point is vitally important and rather subtle. Do you not see that the very dwelling upon these difficulties, dwelling on like, oh, my world's rocking, things are wrong, you know, I'm, all this negative stuff's coming up, dwelling on that, is in itself a negative thought which has probably thrown you off the diet. It's a subtle point. 
Do you not see that the very dwelling upon these initial difficulties when you go on the diet, the first couple days, for instance, dwelling upon these difficulties in, in itself is in itself a negative thought which has probably thrown you off the diet. Subtle point. Again, don't beat yourself up if you feel like you've been thrown off the diet. And also realize that you can do this. You know, just try not to dwell on things. Catch yourself over and over again. And if you find that you really are dwelling on something, go off the diet for a couple days and you can try later. But it's not the negative situations you find yourself in that matter. It's how you react to them. Fox says, the remedy is not, of course, to deny that your world is rocking in appearance, but to refuse to take the appearance for the reality. Judge not according to appearances, but judge righteous judgment. To quote the Bible. A closing word of caution. Do not tell anyone else that you are on the diet or that you intend to go on it. Keep this tremendous project strictly to yourself. Remember that your soul should be the secret place of the Most High. When you have come through the seven days successfully and secured your demonstration, allow a reasonable time to elapse to establish the new mentality and then tell the story to anyone else who you think is likely to be helped by it. This is an important point. Again, somewhat subtle. Um, In short, especially the first time you do this, don't tell anybody you're doing it. Don't tell anybody you're doing it. Do it by yourself. Keep it secret. You know, most of the good teachings in LOA they all say do this secretly you know the secret place go to your secret place if anything I should actually probably discuss this more in other videos because you don't hear about it enough in these modern YouTube (laughs) setting you know because everybody's telling everybody oh well I did this I did this I did this that's usually not how to best implement this stuff don't tell anybody anything a lot of the time unless you have a support group or you know some somebody who understands these principles and is actually trying to work them in your own life in their own life, you know? Um, Which, again, is why I offer counseling and coaching and, you know, group sessions so we can support each other. But generally speaking, most people have no idea about what a mental diet like this is, what it entails. Do not tell anybody about it while you're on it. You know, for instance, I never tell my wife that I'm on a mental diet when I do it. I just don't. Um, And I'm talking to her all, all throughout the day, all the time. The exception I can think of is once you've done the mental diet at least once, and if you do have a support group, you know, you can, I, I think it's okay to discuss it in that setting. Um, I've done that. Honestly, one thing that spurred these videos, this recent series, is that Cecilia, again, and I were talking about going on a mental diet. So we actually were talking about going on a mental diet. And then we both did the mental diet. Um, at the beginning of these videos, I was on a mental diet. The seven-day mental diet. Um, so I think if you have a proper support group, which frankly most people do not have, um, it can be interesting to go on a mental diet together, to know that you're on a mental diet together. And even, you know, like Cecilia and I, and like, you know, Maggie was in, in our text chain doing a mental diet type of thing at the same time. We would text some about it, but it's because we've all, you know, have experience doing it and are very used to these ideas. And it's interesting then to compare kind of the tests and what what you're feeling, what you're going through. But really the first time you do a seven day mental diet, I, I would suggest, um, not telling anybody you're doing it. And then another very important point that's nuanced is once the seven days are up, um, don't go hog wild the next day unless it feels really appropriate to do that. I remember like, for instance, like I used to do, you know, Zen retreats, like week long Zen retreats. And sometimes you'd get out of there. It'd be the last day. And like, and this is like, actually, this is what it's like in Japan too. I was in a Zen center in the United States, but like Japan, like all the monks in Japan, like they used to get drunk, like the day after like a lawn retreat or something like that. Cause like, it was like all this like repressed energy they had to express. Right. When you do a seven day mental diet, don't, don't do that unless you feel like you really need to. It's okay if you feel like you really need to, but, but don't be like, after seven days of this really refined, um, non-reactive thinking discipline you've gone through, don't go hog wild the next day as soon as it's over. Just ease out of it. You know, 
have a couple nice glasses of wine or do whatever you need to do to celebrate that evening or day that it's over. You know, have a nice slice of cake. Um, do something nice for yourself if you want, but don't go like, you know, don't go crazy. Um, it's more beneficial, beneficial to just kind of transition out of it nicely. I still really don't think, and maybe I'll talk to Cecilia about this, but I, I, you know, you hear about longer mental diets, mental diets that are strenuous is what Fox recommends. I think the seven days is a good length. If you don't want to do quite as strenuous of a mental diet, and I don't even know really what that means. That's why maybe Cecilia and I will talk about it. Um, if you don't want to do quite as strenuous of a mental diet, longer, I guess, can be okay, you know? But if you're doing something as strenuous as this, seven days is enough. If you feel like you want to do it longer after you've done seven days, sure, you can keep on going, but don't beat yourself up. I remember, like, I think the second time I did the diet, I had a lot of, like, I was just, like, in a really good place about it. And I was like, I'm just going to keep on going. But what I noticed... Um, I felt very non-reactive, but I, I knew I was off the diet after seven days, even though I was, I knew the seven days were up. Right. And I was like, I'm going to keep on going, but I wasn't quite as focused. And so even though I was on the diet still, I noticed I was really slipping off of it by like eight, day nine or 10 anyway. And then I had to be honest with myself. I'm like, you know what? I'm not, I'm, I'm dwelling in negativity sometimes. Like I'm, I'm, you know, back to my more normalish behavior, even though things have shifted. I'm not on the diet anymore. Seven days is enough, is my point. Um, unless you really feel compelled to go for longer. You know, experiment. Everybody's slightly different, you know, but generally speaking, these are the observations I've made. Fox says, finally, remember that nothing said or done by anyone else can possibly throw you off the diet. Only your own reaction to the other person's conduct, conduct can do that. So that's it. This is a great uh, method to work with your reactivity and it can um, really affect your life in an extremely positive, surprising way. So the seven day mental diet, I highly recommend doing it if, um, if the ideas that we've talked about in this video series resonate with you. This is the kind of video series you can watch again in the future and you're gonna gain something new out of it if you've done the mental diet before or you know, it's, it's you know, so hopefully it's been helpful. Questions, um, comments, anything. I do not look at YouTube comments all that much. If you want to contact me, don't do it on YouTube. I love talking to people about this, but you have to contact me on my website, radicalcounselor.com or email me at info at radicalcounselor.com or my personal email, radicalcounselor at gmail.com. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.